Friday, July 21st. I'm NASA's Gary Jordan. You're looking at a live view uh, inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room as we await the departure of Crew Dragon Endeavor from one docking port on the International Space Station to another in what we refer to as a port relocation. Dragon will be moving from the International Docking Adapter 2, or IDA-2, on the forward Harmony port to the IDA-3 on the Zenith, or space-facing Harmony port. This will free up the forward port for the arrival of Boeing's Starliner on its upcoming Orbital Flight Test 2, or OFT-2, mission. We expect Dragon to push away from the station with NASA astronauts Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur, European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet, and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Aki Hoshide on board at 5.45 a.m. Central Time, 10.45 GMT. And joining me from SpaceX in Hawthorne to walk you through everything today is Kate Tice. Hey, Kate. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kate Tice, a senior certification engineer here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. This will be the second port relocation of a Crew Dragon spacecraft. At this point, the crew is fully suited up. Both the Dragon and APAS hatches have been closed and the vestibule leak checks are almost complete. There are four seats configured right now inside Dragon. Uh, they're numbered from one to four, from right to left when looking at the seats uh, from the other direction. So what we see on the screen now is actually four would be on our far left and number one would be on our far right. Uh, Shane is in seat number two uh, there on the right hand side, which is the commander seat. And Megan is beside him in seat three, which for Crew Dragon is the pilot seat there on the left in front of the screen. To, on the other side of Shane uh, is Toma in seat one. And on the other side of Megan is Aki in seat four. The joint NASA and SpaceX teams just completed their go no go for undocking, and all systems are go for today's relocation. Once Dragon pushes away from station, the full maneuver will last approximately 45 minutes. While Dragon is just moving parking spots, the crew and the vehicle have undergone all of the same checkouts and preparations as if they were getting ready to return to Earth. That way, in the unlikely event that we see an off-nominal scenario, the crew and the vehicle are prepared to deorbit and return home safely. Now we're getting some views inside the cabin of Crew Dragon Endeavor. Uh, on the left there, uh, Commander of Crew Dragon Endeavor, Shane Kimbrough. And on the right of your screen, uh, Pilot Megan MacArthur. And of course, uh, Tomah Pesquet and Aki Hoshide flanking them on both sides. They're awaiting uh, some of the next steps here as we uh, transition uh, uh, very shortly to undocking and with the continuation of depressurizing the vestibule. But before we go into greater detail on what's involved in the port relocation process, Let's first recap what's happened so far this morning. The crew woke up at 1 o'clock a.m. Central Time, 6 GMT, uh, to get ready for today, brushing their teeth, eating some food, and getting ready for the crew suit-up activities, which occurred at about 2.55 a.m. Central Time today. Crew members Tama and Aki suited up before boarding Dragon, while Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur waited until they finished closing Dragon's hatch before suiting up. So about 3.30 a.m. Central Time, the four astronauts boarded Dragon for the port relocation maneuver. It wasn't too long after that, about 3.40 a.m. Central Time, 8.40 GMT, uh, that Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur closed the Crew Dragon's hatch. Uh, they put their space, SpaceX spacesuits on, which will be worn throughout today's maneuver. You see them wearing them right now. And of course, once they finished suiting up, all four crew members performed leak checks on their suits. It was about 4.18 a.m. Central Time that the APAS hatch was closed. This is the hatch on the station side. NASA astronaut Mark Van and a high affixed a docking target to the outside of the APAS hatch before closing it, then cr creating a space between the Dragon and the station known as the vestibule, which continues to depress right now down to vacuum. Van Heim then made his way out of the pressurized mating adapter, leaving the forward hatch on the node to open, but ensuring the zenith hatched is closed. He'll monitor the relocation maneuver from the cupola. Uh, vestibule depressurization started very shortly after the APAS hatch was closed, about 4.20 a.m. Central Time. Uh, it took a while to get down to 5 pounds per square inch, or 5 PSI. They allowed uh, some time for thermal uh, stabilization before performing some leak checks, and then are now in the process of continuing down from 5 PSI down to vacuum. Very shortly here, the teams in Mission Control Houston and Mission Control in Hawthorne will conduct a joint go-no-go -no -go for undocking. 
That brings us up to speed with the events of the day. From this point forward, here's what we can expect. Around 540 Central or 1040 GMT, an undocking command will be sent, followed by a few minutes for the two umbilicals that connect power and data between the two spacecraft to detach and for 12 hooks holding Dragon into place to retract. At about 1045 GMT, after the hooks have retracted, Dragon will fire its service section Draco thrusters in two short bursts to break the stiction between it and the docking port and physically separate from station. Dragon will slowly back off from station, which is illustrated there in the blue section that you see on your screen, and activate its LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, to begin tracking the space station. Once it acquires a solid signal, the ground will command Dragon to hold approximately 60 meters away from station. Once everything looks good, Dragon will begin to move from in front of station to above it. And that's the yellow section there that we see transition maneuver. From there on, our times are approximate and will change in real time based on Dragon's performance. Around 554 Central or 1054 GMT, Dragon will begin to maneuver towards the zenith port of Harmony and IDA-3. We expect Dragon to take about 15 minutes to make the trip up above station with a check-in halfway, and you'll hear that called out as the midpoint. It'll stop and hold once it's 60 meters directly above the Node 2 Zenith port and prepare for final approach, which is the purple section there on your screen. Flight controllers in Hawthorne will once again command Dragon to begin its approach flying in until it reaches waypoint 2, just 20 meters away from the station. Once Dragon reaches that 20 meter mark, it will hold one final time for our teams on the ground and astronauts on board the Dragon to do a final check before docking. There aren't any strict requirements to complete docking during the day or a night pass, but there is always the chance that they will hold to continue until lighting conditions on the docking port are ideal. Once ready, the Dragon will begin its final approach approach. Dragon will make initial initial contact with IDA-3 and its soft capture system will retract to bring the spacecraft in closer for a hard capture, which is accomplished by deploying 12 hooks to firmly hold Dragon in place. That process takes about 15 minutes. After all docking events are successful, flight controllers will configure Dragon for docked operations, connecting power and data to the spacecraft once more. The crew will be able to get out of their spacesuits and set them up to dry and begin operations to get the hatches back open. This includes pressurizing the vestibule and a new round of leak checks. Depending on the exact timing, the crew has the option to have lunch inside Dragon or wait until they're back aboard station. We expect it to take about two hours before the hatch is open, uh, and that'll happen around 8.45 a.m. Central. Today will mark the 89th day on station for this crew who have lifted off from Kennedy Space Center on April 23rd at 5.49 a.m. Eastern and arrived at station about 24 hours later. So far, the crew members have dedicated hundreds of hours to scientific research in the orbiting laboratory and have completed a series of spacewalks to install the first new solar array that launched this spring on the SpaceX Cargo Dragon spacecraft. The mission is the second of six... Final reconfigurations for undock are complete and nominal. Ground is go for undocking at the targeted time of 1040. Please confirm crew readiness and that visors are down. If we all go for undock, visors are down. SpaceX copies all. And Station Houston on the Big Loop performs steps two, two through the end of 1.602 Dragon Departure Monitoring. Station copies, ISS crew is ready for Dragon undocking. Copy. 
With that, both the teams in Mission Control Hawthorne and Mission Control Houston, as well as the crew on board the Dragon and, of course, on board the International Space Station, all teams are go for initiating the undock command here in one minute. Once the undock command is initiated, it'll take several minutes for the series of hooks to uh, start to unlatch. There are 12 hooks that are currently securing Crew Dragon Endeavor to the International Space Station. They'll be released six at a time. And that call was... That call was confirmation that that undock command has been sent on time. We'll be looking for an on-time undocking today. Several steps will uh, will occur to uh, undock from the International Space Station for the Crew Dragon Endeavor today. The undock command being sent. Uh, first, the umbilical will retract. Okay, the big loop umbilicals are demated, complete and nominal. And confirmation that that umbilical has been demated. First set of hooks are opening. Like Gary mentioned earlier, these hooks, while there are 12 of them, we open them in sets of two, going six hooks at a time. Getting a look from the forward camera of Crew Dragon Endeavor today. That's looking at the docking target that uh, NASA astronaut Mark Van Hei affixed to the APAS hatch before it was closed. Vestibule is uh, depressurized, and now the undock command has been sent. We're uh, awaiting confirmation of two sets of hooks. Uh, there are six hooks on each set to uh, uh, start to unlatch. Once they're unlatched, uh, the dragon itself will execute a series of undocking burns, and we'll see physical separation of the dragon from the International Space Station. As mentioned earlier, the relocation will free up Harmony's forward port for docking for the docking of another commercial spacecraft built to carry humans, Boeing's CST-100. Starliner. Here's the new docking location for today, and here's, of course, the Starliner that will be coming up on uh, July 30th and arrive at the station uh, about 24 hours later, launching on July 30th. First set of hooks open and nominal. Good news there. Call out the first set of hooks is open. And we're now going to listen in for the call of opening the second set of hooks. As those second set of hooks continue to drive, uh, it will be very shortly after they are finished driving and we have successful confirmation that those last set of hooks are, are done uh, from unlatching. Uh, very shortly after that, we should be seeing physical separation from this camera view. Uh, that tar docking target you're seeing right at the crosshairs, the center of the camera view from the uh, Dragon itself. Uh, we'll start to see that view getting uh, a little bit smaller as Dragon itself backs straight away to the 60 meter mark. After the hooks have retracted, Dragon will fire its Draco thrusters in two short bursts to break the stiction between it and the docking port and physically separate from station. So we'll be able to see that here just momentarily.
all hooks open and nominal. Okay, we see separation. Separation is confirmed. Double copy. Okay, as you can see there, undocking confirmed of Crew Dragon Endeavor from the International Space Station on time at 5.45 a.m. Central, 10.45 GMT, while Station and Dragon flew approximately 263 miles over the South Pacific, flying west of Chile. On the big loop, uh, Dragon separation visually confirmed. Copy. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Relocate burn zero complete. Double copies. Also heard the call out there that the relocate burn was complete. That was the final of the three burns of the uh, the service section Draco's performed. That final relocate burn lasted about 21 seconds. Dragon already about 50 meters away from the station. It's heading to a 60 meter hold point before transferring to the new docking axis. Dragon is working to acquire LIDAR tracking, which will be used by Dragon to autonomously execute this relocation maneuver. Like Gary mentioned before, we expect it to back straight away to about 60 meters. Station on the big loop, ISS thrusters are enabled. Copy. You're getting a live view from the International Space Station. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. We've confirmed good position within the corridor and we'll be commanding go to relocate shortly. You are go to raise your visors. I think we're looking good uh, in the corridor, so to raise our visors. What you're hearing now is all the teams in uh, Mission Control Houston and from this view here, Mission Control in Hawthorne, uh, agreeing to uh, uh, go ahead and initiate the transfer from one docking axis to the other. Uh, Dragon now holding in front of its uh, uh, original docking axis, uh, undocking from the forward Harmony port right on time, 5.45 a.m. Central Time. It's a little bit further than 60 meters, 95 meters uh, and holding, but from here, the teams are looking to make sure that everything good before initiating that transfer maneuver. Uh, it'll move really from where it is now in front of the International Space Station to directly above it. That'll be the new docking access uh, right in front of the IDA-3 uh, docking port.
from the external cameras of the International Space Station. You can see there in the distance uh, the Crew Dragon holding uh, right now at about 87 meters from uh, its original docking port. Teams are analyzing the uh, the making sure that Crew Dragon itself is ready to for the next maneuver to transition to the new docking axis. Right now, you can see it directly in front of its original docking port. It'll swing uh, upwards from this view uh, to the new docking port that's on the zenith or space facing side uh, of the International Space Station's Harmony port. Now getting views from the control room. We'll be losing the uh, views from the outside of the station periodically throughout today's coverage. Uh, and during the transition maneuver, we'll briefly describe why uh, this is occurring. Uh, it is in part due to the uh, location of Dragon relative to the Tetris satellites. Uh, but as we are uh, looking at the live view from the International Space Station flight control room, we're wa watching the uh, Dragon itself move inward toward that 60 meter hold point. It went out uh, commanded hold to at 60 meters and moved out to about 95 meters. Now it's about 80 meters uh, from the International Space Station. Teams are just analyzing, making sure uh, the Dragon's in the right place and everything is configured, getting ready to execute that transition maneuver from one docking axis to the other. In case you've just joined, SpaceX Crew Dragon had an on-time undocking at 5.45 a.m. Central, 10.45 GMT, uh, while the station and Dragon flew approximately 263 miles over the South Pacific, flying west of Chile. Dragon is about 70 meters away from station, 10 meters to go back to the 60-meter hold point. here in the International Space Station flight control room are busy not only monitoring Crew Dragon as it makes its way back to the 60 meter hold point now at about uh, just under 62 meters will be arriving there shortly. They're also configuring the International Space Station itself. Uh, it has a series of steps through the relocation maneuver. Um, the solar arrays themselves are feathered and locked in a position throughout the duration of today's maneuver and uh, attitude control has since been handed over to the Russian segment. Uh, from here uh, the 
uh, ADCO, the Attitude Determination and Control Officer, has been given the go to uh, transition to the docking attitude. This will hold International Space Station in the position ready for when the Crew Dragon Endeavor makes its relocation maneuver to the new docking axis. Station will be in the predicted attitude position, ready to receive Dragon. And we receive confirmation. Dragon has arrived at the 60 meter hold point. those just joining, you're looking at a live view of Mission Control in Hawthorne. Teams there are working with teams here in Mission Control Houston, monitoring the port relocation maneuver of Crew Dragon Endeavor. Crew Dragon undocked uh, on time, 5.45 a.m. Central Time, moving out uh, with a commanded hold at 60 meters as it drifted out to about 95 meters and slowly made its way back to the 60 meter hold point. Now it's holding steady. Uh, we're just waiting for that go uh, to initiate the transition maneuver from the uh, original docking axis, uh, where Crew Dragon has been calling its home uh, for the past 89 days at the Forward Harmony port. It'll be transitioning to the Zenith or Space Facing port, uh, where it will have, where it will, um, that will be its new home uh, until it uh, departs in the fall. It's actually Devil on the big loop, you see we're holding. SpaceX copies and confirms uh, we are holding at the 60 meter hold point. We are waiting ground go to begin the access maneuver. We'll come back on board when ready. Double copies. As Gary mentioned, this Crew-2 capsule it will remain at this port until it returns to Earth uh, in a couple of months. But before it does that, it'll get a visit from the new Crew-3 crew um, as they will be using the uh, IDA-2 port where this Dragon capsule just left. Uh, and similarly to how we had a full health with two, Dragon, two Crew Dragons on station at once, both Crew-1 and Crew-2, uh, we will have a similar on the big loop, ground will be commanding a relocate transfer to begin the access transition. As a reminder, the soft capture ring deploy will begin and relocate to access. Double copies and we're ready. And Station Houston on the big loop, monitor per block delta step three and one decimal six zero two dragon departure monitoring. Copy and work.
Once again, you're getting a live view from the uh, uh, flight control rooms in Mission Control Hawthorne. Teams there working with teams here in Mission Control Houston, uh, monitoring today's operation. We had a good commanded hold at 60 meters in front of the new docking access, and teams initiated the relocation maneuver. Uh, now we are uh, on our way, the Crew Dragon itself, from the uh, original docking access to the new docking access in front of the Zenith port. Uh, Teams here in Mission Control Houston have confirmed that that motion from the original docking access to the new one is looking good. Uh, the Crew Dragon on the expected trajectory to arrive at its new docking axis. In the meantime, the International Space Station itself has been configured uh, for uh, its docking attitude, making sure that when Crew Dragon arrives on the new docking axis, uh, the station will be in the predicted position. Everything's looking good uh, as we transition from one docking axis to the other. Now, you may have noticed uh, we've been showing a lot of views, live views, from the various control rooms uh, and the flight control teams that are supporting today's maneuver from the ground. Uh, and it's expected that we'll have a gap in some live video from the International Space Station during the port relocation. Now, this is all due to the equipment locations and orbital mechanics of some of the communication equipment that's on board the International Space Station. One of our Cronus flight controllers who manages cameras and communications with the space station, um, Chris White, recently gave a good explainer on Twitter as to why we are seeing just the views here and not the views from space. Now that live vi video comes down uh, thanks to our KU band, which is a high data rate communications from space to ground. The antenna that provides that is uh, points to one of the TDRS or tracking and data relay satellites, which then relays the signal back to the ground. That antenna happens to be located on the top part of the section, uh, top, top part of the station, where it can most effectively point uh, at the different TDRS satellites, which orbit about 22, a little bit more than 22,000 miles above the Earth. To give you some perspective, the International Space Station is currently orbiting at roughly 250 miles. Now, those satellites provide communication to multiple spacecraft and satellites, including uh, familiar ones like the Space Station Dragon, Hubble Space Telescope. Now, for today's operation, the TDRS we're in range of uh, would be behind the Dragon during his approach. So that means any signal that the antenna would send would reflect off of Dragon, which could potentially damage the antenna's tracking sensors. So to prevent this, the Cronus flight controller here in Mission Control Houston uh, activates what's called a mask, which basically prevents the antenna from pointing at a specific area of the sky. Any uh a spacecraft that approaches Zenith or the space-facing side, uh, Port of Harmony, which is part of the maneuver today, has a large area off-limits to the antenna uh, for the, the antenna to po point. And if the antenna can't point at the closest TDRS satellite, then we can't send the video signal. Here's a view from uh, the a cargo dragon undocking. From this position, you can see the cargo dragon there on the left. That uh, that dish that you see there on the right is a space to ground antenna. That's the one that points to the tracking and data relay satellites. You see it's pointing in the general vicinity of the crew dragon. So that's part of the reason why we're not seeing a lot of the live views today. We may be able to see some live views as dragon makes its final approach from the 20 meter hold point at waypoint two down to the docking access. Uh, but otherwise, we're gonna uh, play it safe and mask off the area as Dragon makes its position right in between the dish there that you see on the right, the space to ground antenna, and the tracking and data relay satellites in geosynchronous orbit more than 22,000 miles from Earth.
for those just joining, Crew Dragon has undocked from the International Space Station and is currently making its way to the midpoint in these in this relocation maneuver. It will stop and hold once it's 60 meters directly above the Node 2 Zenith port and prepare for final approach. Flight controllers and Hawthorne will once again command Dragon to begin its approach, flying in until it reaches waypoint two, which is just 20 meters away from station. Once it's there, Crew Dragon will hold one final time for teams on the ground and the astronauts aboard Dragon to do a final check before docking. There aren't any strict requirements to complete docking during a day or night pass, but there's always the chance that this could hold, uh, excuse me, this could hold, this hold could continue until lighting conditions on the docking port are ideal. Once ready, Dragon will begin its final approach back to the space station. which is about one minute until Dragon reaches that midpoint. Throughout this maneuver to um, uh, the new docking access, this transition path, the, the Dragon itself has been holding roughly 60 meters away from the station uh, as it transitions from one docking port to the other. As we near the midpoint, that'll be the halfway point until we reach the new docking access. In the meantime, as we make this transition, please send in some questions using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll do our best to answer them here as we continue to cover the port relocation maneuver and crew two making their way to the new docking access. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Midpoint has been reached. Never comes. And you heard that confirmation, the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor making a successful maneuver from the original docking access after undocking on time, 5.45 a.m. Central Time, moving out to about 95 meters, then back to 60 meters, initiating the transition maneuver and holding at 60 meters uh, from the original docking access to the midpoint. Now it's, uh, from the mid now it's making a transition from that midpoint to the new docking access. It'll take uh, uh, just about another nine minutes. In the meantime, we'll cover uh, the crew that's currently on board Crew Dragon Endeavor. First is uh, Commander uh, Dragon Commander Shane Kimbrough. It'll be his, or it is his, uh, third trip to space. He was born in Killeen, Texas, and raised in Atlanta, and was selected as an astronaut in 2004. Kimbrough is a retired U.S. Army colonel and holds degrees in aerospace engineering and operations research. He first launched aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor on STS-126, then aboard a Russian Soyuz spacecraft for Expedition 49 and 50. Kimbrough is the spacecraft commander for the Crew-2 flight and is, the flight en is a flight engineer for Expedition 65 and 66 on station. In addition to the usual complement of science and maintenance work for our astronauts, he completed three spacewalks earlier this summer with Thomas Pesquet to install the first of his in a series of new solar arrays on the station, bringing his total spacewalk count to nine. This mission marks pilot Megan MacArthur's second trip to space, but her first one to the space station. She was born in Honolulu, but considers California her home state. NASA selected MacArthur as an astronaut in 2000. She holds degrees in aerospace engineering and oceanography. 
MacArthur served as mission specialist aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis on STS-125, the final servicing mission of the Hubble Space Telescope in 2009. She operated the shuttle's robotic arm over the course of 12 days and 21 hours, capturing the telescope and maneuvering crew members throughout the five spacewalks to upgrade Hubble's science instruments, along with removal and replacement of other components to lengthen the telescope's life. MacArthur is Crew Dragon Endeavor's pilot for the Crew 2 mission and is serving as a flight engineer conducting science and maintenance for Expedition 65 and 66 aboard the station. Mission Specialist Aki Hoshide is currently on his third trip to space. Born in Tokyo, Hoshide was selected as an astronaut in 1999 by the National Space Development Agency of Japan, known today as Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA. Hoshide earned degrees in aerospace engineering and mechanical engineering. He flew on STS-124 aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery to deliver and install Japan's science laboratory, Kibo. He also flew aboard the Russian Soyuz on Expeditions 32 and 33 for a 124-day visit to the International Space Station. In 2014, he also served as commander of the 18th NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operation, an underwater expedition at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Aquarius Habitat off of Florida's Key Largo coast. He now serves as the commander for the International Space Station for Expedition 65 and as a mission specialist for the Crew-2 flight. Crew 2 is mission specialist Thomas Pesquet's second trip to space. Born in Rouen, France, Pesquet was selected by ESA as an astronaut in 2009. He has a degree in spacecraft design and control and more than 2,300 flight hours as a command commercial airline pilot. Pesquet first flew to space on the Soyuz as a flight engineer for Expeditions 50 and 51. In that time, he worked on more than 50 experiments and performed two spacewalks to maintain the space station. He has logged 197 days in space. Pesquet is the first European to fly in a Crew Dragon and the first European to launch from America in more than a decade. He's currently a flight engineer for Expedition 65 and will take over the role of station commander later this fall before returning to Earth with the rest of the Crew 2 astronauts. Now, we will be getting some periodic views uh, from the International Space Station during today's port relocation maneuver. The Dragon itself has maneuvered from the uh, original docking access and past the midway point. Uh, we're now in the final stretch of the uh, transition from the midway point, which is the halfway marker between the original docking access and the new one. And Dragon, you see, now is making its way to the new docking access on the space-facing side, uh, really pointing right out towards to space. That's where the International Docking Adapter 3 is located. We're in the final stretch uh, and now starting to get some views uh, from the International Space Station of Crew Dragon Endeavor in the final stretch of this transition from the midway point to the new docking axis. In the final moments here, we're getting some questions using the hashtag AskNASA. Please keep sending them in as we continue our coverage of Crew Dragon's maneuver to a new port. Uh, this first question comes in uh, asking about how about the views that we're seeing. How come people in Space Station Mission Control Room are able to maintain live views of the International Space Station, but we can't? Uh, the answer is that the folks that you're seeing here in Mission Control Houston are looking at the same views that we are. So now we are getting the views from the outside of the International Space Station use some, some of the external cameras. You see here, here's a, view, a shot from the back of the room. We're now getting these views. Now, the space-to-ground communications, the reason we're able to get these views is due to a communications antenna that's located on the outside of the International Space Station pointing towards the tracking and data relay satellites. Now, for a large portion of today's maneuver, some of those, uh, some of those shots are going to be masked. The, the communication path between the 
station, which is 250 miles, and the geosynchronous t tracking and data relay satellites, which are more than 22,000 miles from Earth. We mask off those areas to prevent any damage to the communication antennas as they're sending high data rate uh, radio frequency signals uh, where Dragon really is in between that communication path. So we wouldn't want the, dra the high data rate communication signals to bounce off of the Dragon back to the antenna and, uh, and uh, possibly affect some of the auto track sensors that are on the outside of the station. So the views that you're seeing are going to be periodic. We may lose them um, uh, as we make our way to the new docking access. But right now we're in the home stretch getting some good views. Uh, the Cronus, the uh, uh, mission controller here in Mission Control Houston, is overexposing the image of the Dragon. You see it sort of uh, very brightly coming into our view now. Uh, when the Cronus overexposes the image and uh, increases the aperture of the station's cameras, you can start to see some of the Draco engine, engines firing uh, the different plumes. Uh, you'll see that coming out of Dragon as it uh, makes its transition. That helps to stabilize uh, the Dragon as it makes its way from one docking axis to the other. You can see them overexposing now. If you look carefully at your screen, you can see the uh, Crew Dragon capsule there firing its um, uh, some actuation thrusters there to uh, align for this autonomous procedure. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Dragon has arrived at the 60 meter hold point on Zenith. And Dragon is configured for docking. Confirm crew readiness for approach one. Never copies all. Crew is ready for a first one. Getting more live views from the International Space Station Flight Control Room. You heard confirmation that Dragon has arrived at its new docking axis, holding at 60 meters steady. The Approach 1 maneuver will be uh, executed here shortly and will move Dragon in from the 60 meter hold point down to Waypoint 2, a 20 meter hold point. Uh, from there, it'll hold once again and teams in both Mission Control Houston. And in Hawthorne, we'll conduct a go-no-go -no -go readiness poll and make sure that we are good to proceed from Waypoint 2 down to docking with the new port. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Ground is now go to continue approach, and we will be commanding the resume to approach to Waypoint 2. Never copy, we are ready for the resume. And station Houston on the big loop. Approach resume to waypoint approach is resuming to waypoint two. Monitor per step two and one decimal one zero four. Crude dragon approach and retreat monitoring. It work, thanks. As we mentioned before, the 
Port relocation maneuvers are completely autonomous um, when it comes to the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, although the all four crew members are suited up and strapped into their seats within the Crew Dragon capsule, uh, they are not commanding the vehicle from inside. That all those commands are being sent from ground, and uh, the crew inside the capsule is monitoring, as we heard call out there on the loops. And we heard that confirmation. Dragon is moving from the 60-meter hold point uh, now at about 46 meters and closing into the 20-meter hold. Uh, again, that waypoint two will be a hold command. Uh, teams will conduct a readiness review, making sure everything is good before proceeding in for a docking. In the meantime, uh, we're getting live views from the International Space Station. We've described the masking uh, that's required as Dragon uh, now is really in between the uh, space-to-ground antenna and the tracking and data relay satellites. So our views uh, of the docking maneuver will be uh, pretty sparse uh, throughout the remainder of today's coverage. We may get a little sneak peek of Dragon actually making uh, contact uh, with the new international docking adapter, uh, now 34 meters and closing. In the meantime, keep sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll try to answer as many as we can uh, uh, as we continue our coverage today. Uh, this next one is about why we are conducting the maneuver. Uh, why can the Boeing Starliner not dock? In place where Endeavour was originally located. So why is this maneuver required? Well, Boeing's CST-100 Starliner uh, flight software has been certified for docking to the forward port on Harmony for its flight test to the International Space Station. The forward port offers a less complex approach and presents better lighting conditions without the earth in view of navigation and tracking sensors. Utilizing that forward port on these initial test flights puts the safety of the crew and the two vehicles first. Waypoint two. Starliner will be able to dock to both ports and have the ability to perform port relocation maneuvers by the Starliner 1 mission. This is similar to the approach taken during the first dockings of Crew Dragon during its first test flights to the station. Hey Megan, just for your awareness, we are waiting on ground. Houston Station on the big loop, uh, procedure review complete, and uh, uh, ISS crew is ready for docking. Copy. And we will be anticipating holding at waypoint 2 momentarily. For copies, we will expect to hold at waypoint two. As you're getting live views of the International Space Station flight control room, we have confirmation that the Crew Dragon is holding at waypoint two, just 20 meters away from the International Space Station. This is the final hold point before it makes its way uh, from this final hold point, 20 meters away, to contact and capture with its new docking port. As we wait here uh, and the teams assess uh, the go readiness uh, for proceeding in with a docking, we already heard that go from the crew. Keep sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. Uh, this next one comes from Alex, uh, who's asking why does the Crew Dragon uh, crew need to be on board uh, during it, the dock itself? A good question. Why not just let the uh, Dragon autonomously move from one port to the other? Um, the idea is that in the event of a contingency, if uh, anything were to happen during the port relocation maneuver, say it couldn't undock, or if there was anything that were to happen to the Crew Dragon itself, that the uh, four members of the crew have the available seats in the, uh, we'll call it an escape pod, uh, that gets them down to Earth at all times on, the, on board the International Space Station. There needs to be enough seats uh, in the visiting vehicles uh, to provide transportation, a safe uh, transportation from the International Space 
station back down to Earth. So if anything were to happen for the, to, for the Crew Dragon, all four would have enough seats to return back to the Earth safely. So although unfortunately we don't have video of Crew Dragon, uh, all four crew members, like we mentioned before, are suited up and buckled into their seats inside the Crew Dragon capsule during this port relocation maneuver. Uh, they are now in the final half of this maneuver. Uh, we're gonna be, um, the final step will be the final approach, which will take about four minutes. Uh, we'll hear a call out for CHOP, which stands for Crew Hands Off Point and this occurs when the spacecraft is about two meters away from the docking port and means that any aborts need to be initiated by Dragon's flight computer and uh, af after that point rather than by the crew. And that call will happen at about the two meter point. Uh, it'll just be a matter of seconds really from two meters until it makes contact and capture with the International Space Station. That initial capture time will report out uh, as a soft capture. The uh, soft capture ring itself will retract, pulling the Dragon in uh, to, to begin a hard mating sequence with the International Docking Adapter. Uh, that aligns the hooks very nicely and they'll engage just like we saw at the beginning of today's coverage, all 12 hooks, uh, releasing six at a time. We'll see the opposite during the docking sequence. Uh, the 12 hooks will engage uh, to hard mate the Crew Dragon to the International Docking Adapter six at a time. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Ground is go for final approach and will be commanding resume shortly. Please confirm crew readiness for final approach and visors are down. Please go for final approach, visors are down. Can you confirm the docking light is on? SpaceX copies, crew is go. We can confirm that the docking light is on. Additionally, additionally, as a reminder, once Dragon is inside the crew hands-off point, retreat and breakout are no longer permitted. Never cut these off. And station Houston on the big loop. Monitor per steps three and four in one decimal one zero four crude dragon approach and retreat monitoring. And work folks.
we're getting views from the external cameras of the International Space Station. You can see the forward end of the Dragon right there, that soft capture ring uh, fully extended. And the uh, sequence for moving in from waypoint two to docking has begun. We're now inside uh, 20 meters from the International Space Station. This sequence, um, as we move in, uh, will take about four minutes until we get a contact and capture of the Dragon, bringing our four crew members inside Dragon back inside the International Space Station. Some of the calls you heard uh, uh, during this approach, uh, we of course have Mark Van High inside the International Space Station monitoring the approach. Uh, of course, with the four crew members of the Dragon itself inside, uh, watching the sequences here. The big loop you're hearing is a communications channel of the uh, space-to-ground communications as well as dragon-to-ground. So all the all the communications you're hearing is being heard by uh, the ground teams here in Mission Control Houston as well as Mission Control in Hawthorne and, of course, the crew inside Dragon as well as inside the International Space Station. We're now 15 meters in closing. love to see this view of the crew dragon approaching the space station autonomously driving itself if you recall from the previous version of uh, crew dragon excuse me the previous version of dragon uh, the cargo capsules uh, we they they dock to the station actually not by docking but by berthing uh, which essentially required the robotic Canada arm to grapple the spacecraft and bring it to the station manually uh, so to see Crew Dragon this upgraded version flying uh, on its own without any assistance um, and able to dock autonomously with the space station is a an awesome capability that's just so great to see with uh, our eyes here. Ten meters. Copy. Ten meters. At 10 meters away from this vantage point, uh, you see the Earth there in the lower left corner. We're now flying 262 statute miles over India. Great shot of the forward. Five meters. Great shot of the forward end of Crew Dragon there. Located near the top are the forward Draco thrusters, which of course are not being, being utilized for today's maneuvers. All the maneuvers are managed with the service section Draco thrusters. Crew hands off point, three meters in closing. Hands off. Copy, hands off. Capture confirmed. Copy, soft capture confirmed.
And with that, we have a confirmed contact and soft capture. Dragon and Station were, were uh, flying 262 miles over western China. That docking time, 6.35 a.m. Central Time, 11.35 GMT. Soft capture ring retraction in progress. Double tap. Upcoming, the teams will command Crew Dragon to begin uh, the hard capture by um, commanding the hooks. Again, they will operate in two sets of six, so a total of 12 hooks. Uh, we'll hook in uh, and close, and we'll have confirmation of hard mate complete. From a live view of the International Space Station flight control room, you can see uh, we're losing some of those uh, live views from, from uh, the International Space Station, uh, but that mask has been turned off uh, to uh, uh, make sure we protect some of the communications equipment, the space to ground antennas, and auto track sensors aboard the station. Uh, so we should be regaining some views shortly. In the meantime, we did have confirmed uh, contact and capture at 6.35 a.m. Central Time, 11.35 GMT. And that was after uh, an on-time undocking from the original docking port at 5.45 a.m. Central Time. On your screen a shot of both the pressurized and unpressurized sections of Crew Dragon. The pressurized section being the conical portion at the top, that's where the crew is currently sitting in their seats. Uh, and the bottom half is the trunk, where, and that's where we place unpressurized cargo, uh, such as the International Docking Adapter uh, upon transportation from Earth to the International Space Station. That's where those were uh, placed for transportation to station, uh, where they were then removed and installed uh, in their now um, in, their, in their now permanent homes. The trunk will be jettisoned um, whenever it's time for crew dragon to return home and allow the heat shield at the bottom of the pressurized section to be exposed and allow the crew dragon to splash down safely in the Atlantic Ocean. Dragon SpaceX, ring retraction is complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. Never copy. With that side view of Crew Dragon, we have a great shot of the service section Draco thrusters that I mentioned earlier. Uh, they're the the portholes there on the side of Crew Dragon. Uh, that is where the thrust comes out from the Draco thrusters, and those are the service section thrusters that we utilized for today's port relocation maneuvering.
Station are never on the big loop. MCS is configured, proceeding with hook driving. Station copies. Level copies. Station copies. With the soft uh, capture ring retracted before the hard mate sequence can begin, again, there are 12 hooks that are going to secure Crew Dragon Endeavor to the International Docking Adapter. Uh, teams here in Mission Control Houston configured the International Space Station to be on control moment gyro um, uh, attitude control. Uh, now that it's switched over to control moment gyros, they can begin the uh, hard uh, docking sequence uh, with the driving of the uh, first set of hooks. They're going to drive six at a time. Uh, uh, to make 12 hooks total, securing the Dragon Endeavor to the International Docking Adapter. And with that, we have confirmation that the first set of hooks are driving. As the uh, first set of hooks continue to drive, there are again two sets of hooks, six each, uh, to hard mate the Crew Dragon Endeavor to the International Space Station. A recap of today's activities. Uh, early this morning, the crew woke up at about 1 o'clock a.m. Central Time, uh, getting ready for their day, uh, eating some food, brushing their teeth, and getting suited up uh, to get ready to go inside Dragon and begin today's port relocation maneuver. Uh, after they ingress the Dragon and close the hatches, both on the Dragon side and uh, International Space Station, uh, NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij closed the hatch on the station side, the A-pass hatch, after uh, fixing a docking target. Uh, the crew was suited up, performed leak checks in their SpaceX spacesuits, uh, and got ready for an undocking uh, of the original docking ports where Crew Dragon Endeavor was uh, just uh, about an hour ago. The uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor and the four crew members inside Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, uh, Tomah Pesquet, and Aki Hoshide undocked at 5.45 a.m. Central Time uh, about an hour ago and made the transition to the new docking port, uh, making contact and capture with the port that you're seeing here, the Zenith or space-facing port, at 5.35 a.m. Central Time, completing the 50-minute minute maneuver uh, from the uh, original docking port to its new home, making uh, room on the forward harmony part uh, for the... Uh, uh, Boeing CST-100 Starliner to dock here uh, in uh, next week. Uh, July 30th is when it's set to launch, uh, making contact and capture with the International Space Station set 24 hours later, July 31st. At this point in time, the first set of hooks have closed and the second set are driving. Again, there are 12 in total, and they operate in uh, two sets of six. And we're waiting for confirmation of the clo closure of the second set of hooks. And 
Endeavour, SpaceX on the big loop. Hard capture is complete. You are go to raise your visors. Nothing hard capture complete. Visors up. And with that, we have confirmation that the second set of hooks has uh, finished driving. So all 12 hooks now securing the Crew Dragon Endeavor to the International Space Station. Teams here will now uh, undergo a series of steps to pressurize the vestibule in between the Dragon Hatch and the Station Hatch, just like we saw uh, earlier during today's coverage with the depressurization of the original docking port. Uh, we'll see everything in reverse uh, to allow the pressurization to equalize, making sure everything is good before opening up the hatch and letting our four crew members in inside Dragon, back inside uh, the International Space Station. So now that uh, the Crew 2 NASA astronauts Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur, European Space Agency astronaut Tomah Pesquet, and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Aki Hoshide have redocked with the International Space Station, we're going to wrap our live coverage of, J of Dragon's second port relocation maneuver. The crew will take some time now to get out of their suits and begin the process of opening up the hatches in about two hours. As mentioned earlier, the relocation has freed up Harmony's forward port uh, for the docking of another commercial space spacecraft built to carry humans, Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. This will be Boeing's second test flight of Starliner without crew as they seek to put the spacecraft through all the phases of a mission before flying people uh, inside of it for the first time. It's set to launch from Florida's Space Coast on July 30th and arrive at the space station about 24 hours later on July 31st. Once Starliner arrives and docks, we'll have another historic first with two commercial spacecraft built to fly humans docked to the space station at the same time. Meanwhile, Crew 2 will remain on station until this fall. Crew 2 NASA astronauts Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur, JAXA astronaut Aki Hoshide and ESA astronaut Toma Pesquet are targeting early to mid-November for a return to Earth inside Crew, excuse me, inside Crew Dragon Endeavor off the coast of Florida. But before they go, NASA's SpaceX Crew 3 mission will launch and arrive with NASA astronauts Raja Chari, Tom Marshburn, and Caleb Barron, as well as ESA astronaut Matthias Marr. So we'll have another full house with two Dragon crews docked to the space station at the same time. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Docking sequence is complete. Ground will be enabling hardline power and comm connection shortly. You are go to dock your suits per procedure 4.012. We will be changing cameras to external only. Happy all docking system completes. We are go to dock suits. Our good thanks to you and your team and all the folks in Houston who got us here safely back on the station.